Hello, my name is Katie and welcome back to my channel. I'm so excited about today's video because it is my booktube's favorite books of 2020 video. I've been doing this video for the last three years where I have an open submission process and anyone can submit a clip talking about their favorite book of the year. This way we get to hear from a bunch of different people on booktube and thank you again to everyone that participated. This project is always a lot of fun for me to put together and I love hearing about everyone's favorite books. Please look forward to hearing from everyone on what their top book of 2020 was and let's get the footage rolling. Hi guys, my name is Jasmine and I'm from the channel Lamore Day Books. My favorite book of 2020 was If We Were Villains by ML Rio. I loved this book because the writing was amazing, first of all. ML Rio was able to suck me into the story and make me fall in love with each and every one of the characters. I cried at the end of the book because it was over and I was so emotionally invested in the story. It was just amazing. The pacing was great. The writing was great. We went back and forth in two different time periods which kept me intrigued the entire time. And it was just an amazing story that I highly recommend. So If We Were Villains was definitely my favorite book of 2020. One thing that made me smile this year was my newfound obsession with Grey's Anatomy. I watched all 16 seasons in like two months and I had the most fun and it is now my favorite show. So Grey's Anatomy definitely made me smile and I love it. Hey everyone, my name is Kisti from the channel Kisti Reads. Now I usually love fantasy, fantasy romance, some contemporary, some nonfiction, and even a little bit of sci-fi. And I really favor fantasy, but in 2020 my favorite book was actually a sci-fi. And that is The Space Between Worlds by Micaiah Johnson. This is her debut novel that came out earlier in 2020 and I honestly think that it's super underrated and it's not talked about enough on booktube. Now in this world, travel between the universes has been unlocked. However, you can only travel between a universe if your doppelganger in that universe has been killed. So in comes our character Kara, whose doppelganger is alive in only eight of these universes. And mind you, there are 380 in total. However, our story really kicks off when one of Kara's doppelgangers dies in the eight worlds that she's still alive in. And she goes there and she discovers some really old secrets and she reveals some secrets about her that really influence her present and her future. Now if you like sci-fi or fantasy, if you like a thrilling novel with a slow burn, sapphic romance, some dark themes, and this beautifully woven interconnectedness of all the events and all the characters, and you're gonna love this. This was so well done and thought out. I absolutely loved it. It's a full five stars. After 30 pages, I was completely hooked. I think everyone should pick it up. Hello everybody, my name is Kevin and I work for my family in two family businesses, which it's not exactly my favorite, but I'm still thankful for. Nonetheless, I am here making this video talking to you about my favorite book in 2020 that I read. I have a channel, it's called Story Glyph, and I read pretty diversely because that's what I'm interested in doing, reading from all over different genres, and I really talk about myself a lot and try to relate myself to the books because a lot of times reading is about self-discovery. So if you are interested in that, please check out my channel Storylift and subscribe. My favorite book of 2020 is Giovanni's Room by James Baldwin. I had to think about that for a second because I was like, am I saying the right name? I just really enjoyed this book. It was so beautifully written and it is about a man named David in the 1950s, an American guy from Harlem who goes off to Paris to find himself. He gets into a relationship and finds a friend whose name is Giovanni. This relationship happens to be an affair because David's girlfriend, who he's supposed to marry, is in Paris trying to sort out some things on her own too. It turns out that he has this huge inner struggle of what society thinks is right and whether or not he should follow the conventions of what everybody else thinks that is right and whether he is gay or not. And he's just in this really, really selfish exploration at the expense of someone Someone else and just all the people around him in his life. Oh my gosh, it is such an intense book and it's just really authentic and honest and I think that it really pulls you into that and it makes you realize and want to be as authentic and it's just, wow, definitely maybe one of my top books 
ever. So recommend that. And thank you so much, Katie, for inviting me to do this again. So yes, bye-bye everyone. Hello, my name is Catherine from the channel X Catherine, and my favorite book of 2020 has got to be Rhythm of War by Brandon Sanderson. This is the fourth book in the Stormlight Archive, which is a book series I've been reading for several years now, and it's going to go on for another six books, ten in all, and I'm so excited, and this fourth book just really means a lot to me because, man, it was the best thing that happened to me in 2020, which was a crazy year. It was an emotional roller coaster. It was such a comfort and escape for me, and I just loved reconnecting connecting with these characters that I love so dearly. Brandon Sanderson has done a fantastic job at showing characters with really deep struggles that are very relatable. He features mental illness and characters with past trauma that affect their daily life. That is just so amazing to see in such a successful epic fantasy series. These characters mean so much to me. I relate to Kaladin. I love him so much. And this fourth book was just beautifully heartbreaking, fun, just an escape for everything. And I love it, and it was my favorite book of last year. Hello everyone, this is Gabby from the channel Books and Other Nerd Things, and thank you so much for having me. I mainly talk about fantasy books, so if you want to check out my channel, I'm sure it's going to be linked somewhere. But my favorite book of 2020 must be The Poppy War by Aerith Kwan. An Asian-inspired fantasy all about magical schools, war, and just wonderfulness. The last book came out just this year, so this is a perfect time to catch up on the series. I mean, I still haven't read the last two books, but it doesn't matter, because The Poppy War itself was absolutely breathtaking. My favorite thing about it was the themes it discussed and how it did them. I mean, obviously, war is a major, major theme, and it's explored in wonderful, newest ways, probably a way that you haven't seen really before in fantasy or maybe you have but I just haven't read those but I feel like sometimes war can be glorified but poppy war does not do that by any means it really gets into why and what about war is terrible and what it actually feels like to be in a war that was my favorite thing but also the amazing complex well-built characters the really complex world magic system just the sheer intensity of it it is really intense so please beware of content warning some including um, sexual violence and just really violence in general and sexual assault but if it's something you can handle I think Poppy War will open your eyes in so many ways and really made you make you appreciate fantasy other than a western focus and also maybe learn a bit more about history as it retells the rape of Man King and many other historical um, references also the author is amazing she's in her like very early 20s maybe like 22 and she's so accomplished so I would highly recommend it by far my favorite book of the year and you must read it. All right, bye. Hello everyone, I'm Becca from the channel In A Bookshelf. And my favorite book of 2020, well, one of my favorites because there were many, was Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. This was definitely one of my favorites because I had been waiting for it since like the eighth grade after I read Clocker Princess, which is the last book in the Infernal Devices trilogy. And Cassandra Clare let us know that we were gonna be getting a spinoff series with all of the Infernal Devices characters' children. So I've been waiting for a really long time for this book and it just blew my expectations just out the water. I love the atmosphere of the era that this book is set in. London, the early 1900s. I loved our main characters. I love James Herondale. Cordelia is a queen. And also the ending of this book just like broke my heart into a, a tiny little pieces and um, they won't be put back together again until the sequel, Chain of Iron, in 2021. If you haven't read any of these books or this book, please go pick it up because it was definitely just one of the books that made my year. Hi, I'm Paulina from the channel Changed by Books. I'm 20 years old and I'm from Mexico. I just started making videos this year and I'm so excited. And thank you so much, Katie, for this opportunity. So, well, let me tell you about my favorite book of 2020. It's a backlist book, so it came out a few years ago, but I stopped reading this series like in 2016 and I was so nervous to get back into it because I thought I wouldn't remember a lot of things, but it was so easy to get back into this world and, well, the book is Empire of Storms by Sarah J. Maas. I was so involved with these characters in this world and I'm a really slow reader. So for a 700 page book, I read it like in 5 days and that is pretty fast for me. But the book was just amazing. I love all the characters so much and I care so much for them. And even after reading this book some months ago, I remember a lot of scenes so well because they were like 
just so action packed and so awesome like I don't know how Sora does it but there are a lot of plot twists throughout the whole book and I was just like so surprised with a lot of things and if you know that scene at school space with certain character that is in a lot of danger I was so nervous and I was like reading so fast that scene because I just wanted to know what was going to happen and I don't know any spoilers for these books so everything was like a surprise for me like the end made me cry a lot and I'm just so excited to read Kingdom of Us and the last thing I want to say I know Sarah writes a lot of steamy scenes but I thought Foreign Glass didn't have them because it's YA but when they happened in this book I was so surprised but in a good way I just love all the couples in this book so much and hopefully everyone is okay at the end because if someone dies I'm just going to cry a lot well that was everything I wanted to say and if you want you can talk to me I'm here to make some friends Hello everyone, my name is Darian, I'm from the channel Darian Reads, and my favorite book from 2020 was Strange the Dreamer by Lainey Taylor. This comes as no surprise to anyone who knows me because I never shut up about this book. This is actually my new favorite book of all time, I just love it so much. Lainey Taylor is definitely my favorite author, she just has such amazing and beautiful writing. Her writing is very lyrical and flowery and that's just the type of writing that really works for me. I love it so much and I absolutely adore the characters in this book, especially Laszlo Strange who is our main character. He is just a soft cinnamon roll and <laughs> I love him so much. He, again, one of my favorite characters of all time. The world building in this book is just masterfully done and the way that Lainey Taylor takes her time to reveal things throughout the book I think is just so great and I recommend this book to everybody who loves fantasy because this book was just life-changing for me and it will have you stay up really late and crying trust me <laughs> but yeah this was definitely my favorite book of 2020 and I can't wait to reread this for years to come and I love it so much and thank you Katie for organizing all of this hi my name is Celia and my channel is the little readers corner I am an international relations and creative writing student in my last semester at university I really enjoy reading contemporary romance time travel historical fiction, science fiction, and fantasy books with some nonfiction tossed in. And my favorite book of 2020 was Juliet Takes a Breath by Gabby Rivera. This story is so well told. The writing is fantastic. The plot is so realistic and you connect with the characters so much. I really appreciated how the author wrote every single one of the characters and how all of the different storylines connected. And this specifically is about Juliet who is discovering her sexuality and how she wants to find her place in the world while she's also interning with an author in Portland. It's entirely out of her element and she learns a lot about herself, about the person she wants to be, and about the people around her. This book is definitely a coming of age story and within it Gabby Rivera tackles a lot of really important and essential topics that we're talking a lot about today as well, including feminism, race, body positivity, sexuality, and just find yourself in society. Absolutely recommend this, love this book, and definitely one of my favorite books of 2020. My favorite moment of 2020 was when my phone made this montage collage of all of these portrait pictures that I had, and I looked at it and it was literally a 30 second video of my friend Jade, who also has a booktube channel, because we went to see each other, because we lived nearby each other a couple times in January of 2020 and in August of 2019, and then that randomly popped up as an album at like the end of 2020, which was super random, so that's what made me smile. <laughs> Hey friends, I'm Alana from The Awkward Book Nerd, and my favorite book of 2020 was Legend Born by Tracy Dion. This book is just so, so good to me. So it's about a girl named Brie who is dealing with her mother's death, and while she is away at this college program, she sees basically something magical happen in front of her at a party and realizes that there is a magical secret society on campus and that they may have something to do with her mother's death and so she decides to infiltrate and learn about this society and through that she learns what magic is and like the different ways that it's used 
and she realizes that she may actually have some magical powers of her own. And I just really loved this story. I loved the conversation around grief and I loved the fact that it was such a diverse story. You meet all kinds of people in this story and the cover is just so beautiful as well so that definitely helps a lot. But I definitely recommend if you're looking for one, a diverse fantasy written by a black author who really put her all in this book and you can definitely tell. Um, as you're reading it that she wrote herself in every aspect of this story. Hey guys, my name is Becca from the booktube channel Becca and the Books where I read pretty much an even mix of really hefty complex adult epic high fantasy and also fantasy romance both traditionally published and self-published amongst other things and if you do not know me from there you may know me as I have a bookish candle business called Grace and Honey. So my favourite book of the year was really no surprise I read it back in January 2020 and I knew that it was going to be my favourite book of the year and that is is Crescent City or House of Earth and Blood by Sarah J Maas. Sarah J Maas is my favourite author and the thing that I particularly love about her, which is true about all of her series and Crescent City is no different, is that she has an even mix of the adult epic high fantasy that I love and really compelling romance that I would just die for. I loved the urban fantasy setting in here, how Sarah J Maas created this really well thought out world with a really complex political structure and amazing world building. She also gave me me a cast of characters as usual that I would die for with a lot of moments of humour in there as well. I'm pretty sure a lot of you have heard about the out of context reference to Bryce and the Hoover which was a top tier moment in my opinion but something else that I truly love about this book is that it really just evokes emotions from me you know. I'm not a reactive reader at all but with me being so connected to the characters in this book there were lots of moments that just had me on the edge of my seat because I did not know what was going to happen and I was scared for my babies. As well as that, I do think that Sarah J Maas is very good at mental health representation. We have lots of themes of PTSD, trauma recovery and depression in here. I loved how they were handled and that those details that should always be repercussions of epic fantasy plot lines weren't glossed over. It's Kathy and for those of you who don't know me, my name is Kathy Trithart. You can find me here on booktube as well as Instagram and Twitter all under that really strange surname. Kathy Trithart. If you know me, you know that choosing favorites is not my favorite thing in the world to do. I'm not very good at it. I kind of think that my brain process is similar to the, those trying to figure out like their favorite child or pet or houseplant for those people that have those things. With that in mind, I went through my spreadsheet, I looked at everything that I rated five stars this year, and then I looked at which book I read the most times this year that I rated five stars, and that's how I got to this answer. That answer is Cemetery Boys by Aidan Thomas. I had the pleasure of meeting Aidan Thomas last year at Geek Girl Con back when you could do things like go to conventions and immediately was super into the idea of this book. I then got this arc in about February and was able to read it in March. The original date was supposed to be June for release and then it got pushed back to October so in October or just before then I read it again and tabbed it up. I had never tabbed a book before so that was very exciting because I wanted to do a very proper review of it. And then when the audiobook came out, I also listened to the audiobook because I wanted to hear what the audiobook was like. So I read this book three times this year, gave it five out of five stars every time. Absolutely loved it. Love the characters. I cannot wait until Aiden publishes more things. Thank you as always for having me in this collaboration. I'm looking forward to seeing what everybody else had as their answers. Bye. Hello everyone, my name is Rachel from Rachel Reads and Sings. I want to thank Katie so much for featuring me in this video. So for my favorite book of 2020, it has to be The House in the Cerulean Sea by TJ Klune. I will be shocked if I'm the only booktuber in this video that names this book just because I know a lot of us in the community have just been adoring this book and for very good reason. It is an adult fantasy but I think that pretty much readers of all ages could read this. There's 
there's nothing too mature featured in this book by any means. But this is taking place in a world where there are both magical creatures and humans living in a world together. But unfortunately, the magical creatures are the marginalized community. And so Linus, our main character, he works for the department in charge of magical youth. And so he is assigned to go to this house in the Cerulean Sea to this orphanage where there are six dangerous children living there and to investigate what is going on. And I love this book so much because it truly is the literary equivalent of receiving a hug. It is just wonderful and whimsical and charming and hilarious. Highly recommend the audiobook, by the way, because the narrator does a fantastic job with all the different voices. And it is just a book that means so much to me and I cannot wait to reread over and over and over again. If you don't read this book, you are making a huge mistake. Hi guys, my name is Trin from the channel Transformers. My favorite book of 2020 has to be The Way You Make Me Feel by Marine Gu. One of the things that I really love about this book is the fact that the main character has grown so much throughout this novel. It's just really great to see her character development in this book. I love the friendship, I love the romance, but I think the best thing in this book is her relationship with her father because she is basically raised by a single dad and I just love this amazing relationship between the main character and her dad. It's just so wholesome. Like her dad is literally the best dad ever. Overall, this book is really great. I will say the ending is not the best. I feel like it could be a little bit longer, but this book just has a huge impact on me on my life and I remember after finishing this book I knew that this was gonna be like number one on my list of favorite books of 2020 so this book is amazing and I highly recommend this book because I love the character I love the character development and I love the relationships in this book lastly something that make me smile in 2020 I think it has to be manga so as you can see this is like my manga slash graphic novel shelf well manga graphic novels comic books you get it I have read so many manga this year and they really changed my my life so yeah I just really love manga. I highly recommend reading manga and I really hope that it makes you smile. Namaste guys I'm Divya AK Celebrity Lead Search. Thank you Katie for having me on your channel to do best book of 2020. So my best book of 2020 was Ghostwood Song by Erica Water. I absolutely loved this book. This was like the first book of my 2020 that I actually kept for uh, five stars too. So this book is it really mysterious it has so vivid imaginative descriptions that i absolutely love and mostly most important thing that this book is a musical book it has fiddle it has a fiddle playing main character also so at the start of the book i didn't exactly like this book as it was getting more romantic in the sense that i don't like it has lgbtq representation also but a very tiny bit of that so i was not liking that because of that romance part but as soon as I started reading more it got things starting more mysterious and thriller at the every end of the page I was actually thinking of what's going to happen next and everything like that so I would highly highly recommend you to pick this book up if you ever want and it's just a beautiful book so this book is about Shadi Grove whose stepfather is being murdered and the his her brother is being accused of the murder so she can't let the dad be dead and she sings the songs to get the ghost near her and uh, like tell the truth of who's the actual murderer of her stepfather. Hi everyone, my name is Sandy from the channel Sandy Reads A Lot and my favorite book of 2020 is You Should See Me In A Crown by Leah Johnson. I thought that this was a really great and wholesome why contemporary following a black teenage girl named Liz who is trying to run for prom queen and while this is all happening she gets to know this new girl named Mac who's in this competition as well and they begin to develop feelings for each other. I really love the story because it was very heartwarming and fun to read but it also explores topics on sexuality, racism, and privilege. I love the different types of relationships that were portrayed in the book. Obviously there's a relationship between Liz and the new girl as well as friendships and sibling relationships. Liz also has anxiety it definitely wasn't a huge focus of the story but it was nice to have that representation overall it was such a great read and i would highly recommend it and one thing that made me smile this year is starting grad school i know that's usually not something that would make people smile considering how stressful grad school can be but i'm so happy with what i'm studying and with the program that i'm in i've really enjoyed the classes that i've taken and i really love my entire cohort i just feel like we're super close and we're always willing to help each other out with anything so i feel like my cohort has been such a great support system i just finished my second semester of grad school and so thinking about my cohort and being able to learn from them and being inspired from them really brings a smile to my face. Hi guys my name's Sophia I am from the channel The Reading Fangirl and my favorite book of 2020 was Chain of Gold by Cassandra Clare. I am a massive Shadowhunters fan I always have been for many years I think for about eight years now. I was highly anticipating this book because we've been looking forward to it for many many years now and it did not disappoint. 
I mainly love this book because I love the cast of characters. I think Cassandra Clare did a beautiful job at introducing all these characters and giving them their entire backstories and sort of focusing more on them as people rather than the plot as a whole because I love a character driven story. I particularly love Matthew, James and Cordelia. They are my three favourite characters. I am very excited to see where this series goes in the next book and I just know that I'm going to love it no matter what happens. Hi, my name is Maya and I'm from the channel Ocean Reads. I don't think I've ever said this name out loud to be honest. On my channel I do the usual booktube content. I have a TBR game called Court of Cards and I also do journaling videos. And if you'd ask me, Maya, what is your favourite genre? I would definitely tell you that it is fantasy. However, I don't have a single fantasy under my top three books of the year. My number one favorite book of the year is actually in German, so I'm not going to talk about it too much as it's also not translated. It is called Effilist and it is set in the 1890s in Berlin and it's super entertaining, super funny, has an awesome romance and is really feminist. So if you're able to read in German, please pick it up. My best English book of the year is actually nonfiction. It is Born a Crime by Trevor Noah. You might know him, he is a comedian and he also has a talk show. And if you didn't know, he is from South Africa, his mother is South African and his father is white. So he is born a crime because he was born under apartheid and interracial marriages were forbidden. So we are basically following him growing up under apartheid and while we learn a lot about it in this book, it's more so about him growing up, his childhood. It's just so educational, but at the same time super entertaining and easy to get through. I'm not a fast reader at all, but I flew through this. This is so addicting and super well written in my opinion. So I would really, really recommend this one. Hi Katie, my name is Anastasia and I'm from the channel Books of Natasha. My favorite book of 2020 has been The Origin Series by Jennifer L. Armentrout. This is a spin-off series, this is a spin-off for the Lux by Jennifer L. Armentrout and I'm really in love with it. I love the characters, the plot, everything. I have already reread this series three times. I'm sorry but I can choose just one book of this series because it's quite difficult for me because uh, all of them are amazing and I love each uh, book for different reasons so I'm hoping everyone will read this series because it's so worth it, it's amazing I have never read a series quite like this because aliens is not a hot topic for YA so I'm hoping everyone will give this book a chance Hey, I'm Madison Mary from the channel Princess of Paperback and my favorite book of 2020 is Beyond the Ruby Veil by Mara Fitzgerald. This book is about... I absolutely... <sighs> motherfucker. I absolutely fell in love with this book. It took me by surprise. It is a little bit gay, but mostly we are following a girl named Manuela and she is so cutthroat and so ruthless. I don't think, I, I've never really read a character much like her before. I think if you enjoyed The Shadows Between, she is very selfish. The actions she makes in this book are not good decisions. Like she does things and it hurts a lot of the people around her, but so long as she herself ends up on top, that is all that matters. And she is not afraid to ruin anything. And she's not afraid to break parts of herself in order to get ahead and it's just it was really interesting because the synopsis for this book is pretty much like the first 15 percent and then the other 85 percent of this book was just a total like mind blow i did not see any of it coming and it was just it was a really cool world and i'm so excited to see where the sequel goes in 2021 I do want to quickly mention that there is some eye horror in this and there is blood magic in this and also our two main characters and also our main character is gay AF but the romantic aspects of this book are pretty minor but it hints at the fact that there will be some really great like sapphic romance in the sequel.
Something that made me smile back in 2020 was when I got to go to ALA and hang out with some of my bookish friends. It was really awesome. One of those people is, of course, Katie from Katie's Book Nook. Um, she's one of my best friends here and honestly, it's just, it was just awesome. We also got to go to a concert together in 2020 and that also made me smile. So yeah, that's it. Thank you. Thank you everyone again who submitted a clip. Like I said, it's just a joy to make this video. Everyone is linked down below in the comments if you would like to check out everyone's channels. And now I will talk about my favorite book of 2020. So it's no surprise that my favorite book of 2020 is of course from Blood and Ash. I did post my whole top 10 books of 2020 video if you would like to check that out. And this book completely swept me off my feet this year. It is everything that I love in a fantasy with such a fierce protagonist. And it really tackles a lot of important topics, fiction. Um, so we follow Poppy, who is this maiden and basically cannot do anything, can't like be seen or heard, just like wear a veil. She was out in public, can't talk to anyone, lives a very lonely and solitary life, and she's told she's the savior for this kingdom when she ascends, but no one really knows what ascension is or like has explained to her, and all she knows is she's waiting for this ascension, but she would rather be with the guards out there protecting the kingdom. Then comes along a golden-eyed guard named Hawk, who basically makes Poppy question everything that she's ever believed and really incites her anger. It is a kingdom that has been forsaken, that is rising, and these dark creatures are crawling out of the night to attack Poppy's home. <sighs> I mean, just like everything about this, it is just everything that I love in a fantasy. It is so addicting and like compulsively readable. I already want to reread this. I'm gonna wait until right before the third book comes out and do a reread, but like, this is just everything that I love in a fantasy. I think it also really explores the topic of female empowerment and female sexuality, which is a very important topic. And just the characters, of course, are just so lovable. And also, if no one writes sexual tension like Jennifer L. Armentrout, she can really just up the ante in like any scene that she writes and the romance in this is just so heartbreakingly beautiful. There are so many twists and turns and there's Things that happen in this book that I think combine a lot of unique elements and of different types and genres of fantasy into this one really cool, this one really cool mix of fantasy. So I could go on and on forever about this book, but I love it so much, which is why it is my top book of 2020. Please let me know down below what your top book of 2020 is and give a bunch of love to everyone that participated down in the comments below because like I said, I couldn't have done this without them. And have some fun reading some books and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Bye.